Kame Fura. This. You caused my obsession with Isekai. My Atome. grandest mistake. You did this. You caused this. This is all your fault. All of it. All of those Isekai wrote, like, reincarnation Otomes I made you read. All the ones I mentioned with Born. All the ones we read together. The, like, seven that are on my shelf. This is all your fault. Can I see that book? No. I promise I won't damage it, destroy it, or do anything to harm you with it. You're not going to harm the book or me? Yes. With I... either one or the other? Yep. I promise not to do that. I promise not to harm you or the book. I have been burned too many times. <laughs> um, so, fun fact about me that you may know if you've seen our Hamefora episodes on the channel. Hamefora was the first uh, isekai uh, otome like reincarnation royal romance novel I ever read. Um, and that was because it was the first one of those anime I ever saw, which Nick Knack showed me the anime when it was coming out, and then we proceeded to watch it for the channel just a few, like, weeks later. I prefer the anime. <laughs> the book missed a fate reference that they, or didn't put in, didn't use a fate reference that they did in the anime. <laughs> well, regardless, um, so this is not one of the oldest of this type of book, but it is certainly one of the most well-known. Um, there's so this is the manga. There's actually a light novel version, too. Um, light novel was first. Yes. It usually is. It's the same thing with Accomplishments of a Duke's Daughter. Yeah. Um, but I have the manga version, not the light novel version. Um, and we have seen the anime of this, the first season. I haven't seen the... I've hallucinated a second season, apparently. I've but it was not the real so, second season? I had to break the news to Seki. Because I watched the second season, and while the second season was coming out, I I found out about a spinoff manga. Uh -huh. About what would happen if... Uh, she was reborn at the... So in this case, she's reborn as a child into yeah. the villainess's body. right? This is villainess, death flags. Right? In the spinoff, she gets re uh, reborn at in the, the process of, the of bullying the, like, the, the main heroine. Yeah, like already into the bullying, and... I watched an an. You let me tell. I watched an anime. No. Based on it that. Wasn't an anime. No, 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 no. I just, in my head, I remember there was animation. There was color. It was like fully animated, colored out. I remember the soundtrack to her being reborn, like in the middle of bullying. Apparently, that doesn't exist. No, she read the manga that I sent her of it because I thought she'd like it. And apparently the manga was so good it became an anime in her head. Genuinely! Color! Voice actors! Animation! I don't even remember that it was a manga! That's how fucked up this shit got me! Anyways, I really like Hamefura. This volume, because this is the version, this is not the spinoff, so this is for her from, like, a child. So this is basically her from, like, age, like, four or five up to, like, 14, starting school. Um, the last page is them, like, getting ready to start school. Um, she has proceeded to become friends with basically all of the main cast, except for the ones we haven't met yet. Yeah, and... I gotta be careful here, because I could talk about the rest of the anime, or I could talk about this portion. I like this portion as a one-off uh, story. Yeah, just like her... But she's, she, she, also, she's so dumb. We love to see it. She is dumb as a bag of rocks. Um, but yeah, it was really cute to see her, like, endear herself to all these people who she, like, is an enemy with in like in the game like she talks about it. she's like oh if i do this thing they'll hate me but oh my god she's so cute i don't want to do that thing like it just shows that like this this girl who's been reborn as katarina is actually she's a really nice girl like i mean sure it seems like she's maybe like obviously she doesn't want to die but like she's not exactly like a scheming bitch she's just dumb and cute and sweet I, I think it's it, it's a fun little feel good plot when you read it. That said, I gotta without talking about the rest of the series, I gotta say they kind of blow a lot of their load on the plot here. 
there is there is a lot in in this first bit because you get like all of the lore dump about the Atome game, and then you get like her making all of her plans for what she's gonna do. A lot of the flaws of each of these characters that are introduced here are resolved here. Mm -hmm. It feels like a one off. It could be a one off. Like genuinely, this series could have ended at the end of this book, and there would really be. Other than not having met, like, a couple of characters, there really wouldn't be any issues. Mm -hmm. um, I actually do like the greater series, um, but that's because I kind of did that. I did that, like, thing where you, like, hyper-focus on something and then proceed to just consume a little bit of everything all of the time. <laughs> uh, and I'm still in this phase of my reading journey. Um... As, as Nick Knack has unfortunately found out with accomplishments of a duke's daughter. I'm so sorry, but you did this. Okay, but the problem with accomplish, accomplishments of a duke's daughter is not this. The problem with accomplishments of a duke's daughter is that across the one manga volume we had, we didn't get into any of the plot. No, we did get into none of the plot. It's okay. I'll have you read, like, Abandoned Empress and Villains Are Destined to Die and Remarried Empress, and then we'll get a nice kind of, like, smattering of, like, the different... The kind of different vibes you can get. Um, don't don't save him. He deserves this. Don't 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 save him. He deserves this. Um, this this is all payback for Fate Stay Night two thousand six, um, <laughs> and for uh, suppository domestic Nakanajo. That's it. I won't defend domestic Nakanajo, but in my defense for Fate Stay Night two thousand six, <laughs> I ran past you the fact that I was going to have to show you a pretty bad anime to get you to the rest of Fate. <laughs> like and that was like some of the foundation of the channel's rules. Very true. Uh, we all suffer from them, but still. So, I I'm before we you know before we talk about anything of the rest of this, if we want to talk about it, um, I'm actually going to be. I think after I've had you read the other three of this sort of thing, right? There's three more. Well, okay, one's not an isekai nor an otome, but it is like a. I, I want you to read this one. High well. class fantasy. Yes, yes. I so, can respect that. Yeah. Um, once I've had you read like one volume of, of each of the other three, I do actually want to do a separate episode where I just want to talk about the kind of smattering that you've now seen from the genre. Because in my opinion, I feel like each of these has have like notable differences in the way that the authors go about the plot. Like you've already noticed from Accomplishments of a Duke's Daughter. Like... We didn't get into that much. I'll, I'll have you actually read the web novel for that, just so you're on an even footing. But even then, it was different from this in 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 plot and story. Like, yeah. it, it was. So, I would be interested in in a comparison once we've read a few more, uh, because like obviously I can see the differences between all of these, but also I love these and I read like fifty others like actively. So like I kind of have to be able to. I saw a meme. I saw a meme on TikTok. You're going to love this. I saw a meme on TikTok, right? So it just had one of the images of like one of the one of the girls being reborn into a villainess's body in front of like one of the like castle settings in one of these things, right? The caption literally said, "I've been isekai into a Natome game, except I've read 300 of them and I don't remember which, so I don't know the plot or the characters." And honestly, that's what it feels like sometimes. Like, some of them are different. Like, a lot of them have unique things about them, but a lot of them are just copy-pasting. A lot of them are just copy-pasting. So, like, in the grand scheme of, like, this modern genre of isekai, I gotta say, Hamefura to me feels like the equivalent of you. We'll say you. <laughs> picking up, like, fucking Lego Star Wars having a hard time with it because you don't play many video games and calling it one of the hardest games you've played. Oh, you mean, and then, her, like, you mean you, her in here? Yeah. Where, 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 where all you have to do is have a pulse to be able to beat that game. Yeah, just don't be a cunt. And then, like, I compare it to, like, a sentence of a bookworm where that character's actively playing on, like, impossible mode. I'm so fucking excited for the villainess is destined to die. Because the, the gimmick of that, and this isn't spoiling anything, but the gimmick of the villainess is destined to die, is she starts on ultra hard mode in this game, where all of the characters 
hate her already as a child. Like, she starts at the worst possible place. So I'm really excited to have you see that because that is like hard, hard mode. That like, could be interesting. Every decision is likely to lead to death. I think that's what I was looking for in this series when I first found it. No. I didn't get it and I enjoyed it for what it was for a bit. It's it's a little bit misleading in the title because it says all roots lead to doom and that's a reference to the Utome game. But by the end of this volume, it's very, very clear that basically nothing she can do. She would have is to murder to somebody. To yeah, like literally commit murder. And even then, if it was justified, a couple of them would defend her. Like this is Isekai very easy mode. This is game journalist mode. This and is then, the one you want to get reborn into. Yeah. This is the one. Then of course, like compared to this, you've got like even the spin-off of this where it's like actually normal mode in the spin-off. Yeah. And it's a completely different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Okay, I'll say this, because I know I've been talking a lot about the greater series because I have seen the anime. I will bring up something here that, hey, do I feel like they do better in the manga than they did in the anime. Okay. Um, in the manga, you get more of a sense that Katarina is not just the original person who was isekai mm -hmm. You get some sense, at least at the beginning here, that Katarina is Katarina but now has the memories of the person who got isekai. They do that all... Yeah. They definitely... They they, 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 they make that more clear early on. Yeah. Like, that. that's something... Some of these do that where, like, there are two personalities, or, like, the original person is still in there, but they know what their actions lead to now, so they kind of sit back and watch... It's like, like taking the worst person you know and having them grow up with a healthy, uh, healthy childhood. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Can uh, can I can we talk about? Fuck this scene. The axe. Fuck that scene. Why? Because that's the scene in the anime they made into a fate reference. In that scene, though, they don't do that. They do neither the. Uh, there was two references in the anime. They had the uh, the shining reference, and then they had a fate reference. They do neither. What was the fate reference? So, in the anime, when she breaks into there, there is a gleam of light coming through the broken door as she stands over uh, her brother, and that is a reference to Shiro uh, and Saber's iconic scene where Saber stands over Shiro in the shed. Is that, like, a for sure reference, or is yeah, it just something you like, noticed? That was, like, that's... There is no way in which that wasn't a reference. That was, like, a... Re complete recreation of that of their poses. Okay, well, like you kind of can't do that in manga form. Tell that Not to every easily. Fate Stay Night manga. Not easily. I could understand that, like not happening. Lo, well, I'm just saying. Also, we we stand the Council of the Katarinas. Council of Katarina. Yeah, the Council of Katarinas. We love this. Um, I also like the amount of like flow charts I get in this volume. Like I love me a good flow chart, so I'm living good here. Uh, but no, this this is this is a solid choice if you want to read one of the Villas Villainous Atome games. It is not a bad series. It has a good anime. There is a, an interesting spinoff. The series keeps going. Um, it is solid, in my opinion. It's not the best. But it's certainly not the worst. I think if you're looking for a feel-good anime, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. This falls more down the Isekai, the Ieshike pipeline, too. So, keep that in mind. This falls down the Ieshike pipeline. Something like the villainess is destined to die, that does not fall down the Ieshike pipeline. Can we it read does that not. one, please? Yes, we can read that one. I think you'd actually like it. Um, anyways, so, like, comment, subscribe. Um, once again, let us know in the comments if you have anything you want us to read. No one ever has, but hey, I always can hope.